How are you? Today we will discuss on introduction to epidemiology. Under this presentation we will cover four sessions. The first one is definitions of epidemiology. The second one is history of epidemiology. The third is key uses of epidemiology. And the fourth one is core epidemiologic functions. Dear families, my name is Agaonacho. I am a public health epidemiologist. Please subscribe, like and share. When you come to the definitions of epidemiology, the word epidemiology comes from the Greek word epi meaning on or upon, demo means people, and logo means the study of. And the classical definitions of epidemiology is the study upon people. Many definitions have been proposed, but the following definitions capture the underlying principles and public spirits of epidemiology. Epidemiology is the study of the distribution and the determinants of health-related states or events in a specific population under the applications of this study to the control of health problems. There are key terms in the definition, this definitions, and the first one is study. Epidemiology is a scientific discipline with sound methods of scientific inquiry at its foundation. Epidemiology is data-driven and relies on systematic and unbiased approaches to the collection, analysis, and interpretations of data. The second term is distribution. Epidemiology is concerned with the frequency and patterns of health events in a population. Frequency refers not only to the numbers of health events, but also to the relationship of the number to the size of the population. When you come to the pattern, pattern refers to the occurrence of health-related events by time, place, and person. Time pattern may be annual, seasonal, weekly, daily, hourly, or any other breakdown of time that may influence disease or injury occurrence. Place pattern includes geographic variations, urban or rural differences, and locations of work sites or schools. Personal characteristics include demographic factors such as age, sex, marital status, and social economic status, as well as behavioral and environmental exposures. The determinant is the, sec the third key term. It means epidemiology is also used to search for determinants, which are the cause and other factors that influence the occurrence of disease and other health-related events. Epidemiologists assume that illness does not occur randomly in a population. Rather, it happens only but when the right accumulations of risk factors or determinants exist in an individual. Health-related states or events The term health-related states or events may be seen as anything that affects the well-being of a population. Specified populations, epidemiology is concerned about the, collection, the collective health of the people in a community or a population. The fifth uh, key term is the application. Epidemiology is not just the study of health in a population. It also involves applying the knowledge gained by the study to the community-based practice. The second session is history of epidemiology. Although epidemiology as a discipline has bloomed, bloomed since World War II, epidemiologic thinking has been traced from Hippocrates through John Grant, William Farr, John Snow and others. The contributions of some of these early and more recent thinkers are now discussed. The first one is Hippocrates around 400 BC attempted to explain this occurrence from a rational rather than a supernatural viewpoint. In his essay, entitled On Earth, Water and Places, Hippocrates suggested that environmental and host factors such as behaviors may influence the development of disease. On around 1662, John Grant, a London Dasher and councilman, published a landmark analysis of mortality data in 1962. This publication was the first to quantify patterns of birth, death, and disease occurrence. Noting, dis noting, dispar noting disparities between males and females, high infant mortality, urban versus rural differences, and seasonal variations. Around 1800, uh, William Farr 
builds upon Grant's work by systematically collecting and analyzing Britain's mortality statistics. He considered the father of modern vital statistics and surveillance and developed many of the basic practices used today in vital statistics and disease classification. He concentrated his efforts on collecting vital statistics, assembling and evaluating those data and reporting to responsible health authorities and the general public. Around 1854, John Snow, conducting a series of investments, investigations in London, considered as he is the father of field epidemiology. Snow conducted studies of cholera outbreak, both to discover the cause of disease and to prevent its recurrence. He formulated natural epidemiological experiments to test the hypothesis that cholera was transmitted by contaminated water. Around 1915, Dolan Hill used a case control design to describe and test the occasion, the association between smoking and lung cancer. And France and Italy, and around 1915 also, used huge formal field trial of the poliomyelitis vaccine in China school children and 1955 Dauber and his friends used court design to study risk factors for cardiovascular disease in Frankman Heart Study. The third session is the key uses of epidemiology. Epidemiology and the information generated by epidemiologic methods have been used in many ways. Some common uses are described here. The first one, epidemiology, assesses the community cells. Public health officials responsible for policy development, implementation, and evaluation uses epidemiologic information as a factual framework for decision making. And the second core function is making individual decision. Many individuals may not realize that they use epidemiologic information to make daily decisions. When persons decide to quit smoking, climb the stairs rather than wait for an elevator, when eat a salad rather than a cheeseburger with fires, use a condom, they may be influenced consciously or unconsciously by epidemiologist assessment risk. Third one is completing the clinical picture. When investigating a disease outbreak, epidemiologists rely on healthcare providers and laboratorians to establish the proper diagnosis of individual patients. But epidemiologists also contribute to physicians' understanding of the clinical pictures and natural history of disease. The fourth one is searching for causes. Ideally, the goal is to identify a cause so that appropriate public health actions may be taken. One can argue that epidemiology can never prove a causal relationship between an exposure and a disease since much of epidemiology is based on ecologic reasoning. Nevertheless, epidemiology often provides enough information to support effective actions. The third session is core epidemiologic functions. Under this, six major tasks of epidemiology in public health practice were being uh, discussed. The first one is public health surveillance, the second is field investigation, the third is analytic studies, the fourth is evaluation, the fifth is linkage, and the sixth is policy development. We will see each one by one. The first one is policy public health surveillance. It is the ongoing systematic collection, analysis, interpretation, and dissemination of health data to health help guide public health decision-making and actions. Surveillance provides information for action. Field investigation requiring the coordinated efforts of dozens of people to characterize the extent of an epidemic and to identify its cause. The objective of such investigations also vary, often leads to the identification of additional unreported or unrecognized ill persons. And analytic studies, surveillance, and field investigation are usually sufficient to identify cause, mode of transmission, appropriate control, and prevention measures. But sometimes, analytic studies employing more rigorous methods are needed. Often, the methods are used in combination with surveillance and field investigation, providing clues or hypotheses about causes and modes of transmission. 
and analytic studies evaluating the credibility of source hypothesis. The hallmark of any an analytic epidemiologic study is the use of valid comparison groups. Epidemiologists must be skilled in all aspects of such studying, including the design, the conduct, analysis, and interpretation, and as well as communications of findings. Evaluation. Epidemiologists who are accustomed to use systematic and quantitative approaches have come to play an important role in evaluations of public health surveillance and other activities. It is a process of determining as systematically and objectively as possible the relevance, effectiveness, efficacy, and implies pact of activity with respect to established goals. When you say effectiveness, it is the ability of a program to produce the expected result in the field. When you say efficacy, it is the ability of to produce results under ideal condition, and efficiency refers to the ability of the program to produce the intended results with a minimum expenditure of time and resources. When it comes to linkage to promote current and future collaboration, the epidemiologists need to maintain relationship with staffs of other agencies and institutions, and policy development epidemiologists working in public health regularly provide input, testimony, recommendations regarding disease control strategies, reportable disease regulation, and healthcare policy. When it comes to the epidemiologic approach, an epidemiologist counts cases or health events and describes them in terms of time, place, and person divides the number of cases by an appropriate denominator to calculate rates and compares these rates over time or for different groups of people. Before counting cases, the epidemiologist must decide what a case is. This is done by developing a case definition. Then using this case definition, the epidemiologist finds and collects information about the case patients. The epidemiologist then performs descriptive epidemiology by characterizing the case collectively according to time, place, and person. When it comes to the case definition, a case definition is a set of a standard criteria for classifying whether a person has a particular disease, syndrome, or other conditions. Some case definitions, particularly those used for national surveillance, have been developed and adopted as a national standard that ensures comparability. Use of an agreed-upon standard case definition ensures that every case is equivalent regardless of when, where it occurs or who identified it. Furthermore, the number of cases or rates of disease identified in one time or place can be compared with the number of or rates from another time or place. When it comes to the components of a case definition for outbreak, a case definition consists of clinical criteria and sometimes limitations on time, place and persons. The clinical criteria usually includes confirmatory laboratory tested, if available, or combinations of symptoms, subjective complaints, signs, subjective physical findings, and other findings, investigations. Now, when it comes to the case classification, cases can be classified as clinically compatible cases, which is a clinical syndrome generally compatible with the disease as, as described in the clinical description. Confirmed cases are clinically compatible with cases which is laboratory confirmed. And epidemiologically linked cases are a case in which the patient has had contact with one or more persons with, who either have or had the disease or have been exposed to a point source of infection. Now, probable cases are typical clinical features of illnesses and partial laboratory results confirmation pending or epidemiologic link to a laboratory confirmed cases. And suspected cases are cases with typical clinical features of illness and missing laboratory NDP information. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like the video.